Good morning. He said I'm an Alabama fan. I don't know where he got that, but I was just thinking before, um, while before Darla spoke, isn't God good? It seems like He gives us what we need right when we need it. For instance, if I were an Alabama fan, preparing this lesson, encouraging words, picking picking up your spirits. I really needed that after that loss last week to A&M. On the other hand, if I were an Auburn fan, I would have really enjoyed preparing this lesson because I needed the encouragement because of all the losses. <laughs> hey, Steve. Love you, Steve. Just totally, just totally missed it. Not going to look. Not going to look. No eye contact. Thank you for allowing me to spend some time with you this morning. Did an excellent job last week. Enjoyed your presentation. Can't hear. Well, can we turn this up? How do we turn this? Up? Ah, gotcha. All right. I'm with you. So, encouraging words. Sam, do I normally have a problem with speaking loud enough? No, Sam says no. <laughs> Sometimes the encouragement that we try to give others is taken a little too much to heart. One morning I opened the door to get the newspaper and was, was surprised to see a strange little dog with our newspaper in his mouth. Delighted with this unexpected delivery service, I fed him some treats. The following morning I was horrified to see the little dog sitting in front of our door, wagging his tail, surrounded by 18 newspapers. <laughs> I spent the rest of the morning returning the newspapers to my neighbors. I had a wonderful time getting ready for this time. I got a lot of encouragement out of it. And I'm going to ask several of you, uh, if you don't have a Bible, if I say, hey, would you read, just punch the person next to you and grab their Bible. But I want to get, we want to start with reading just a few verses of encouragement. Uh, Steve Presley, do you, Psalm 38, 8, 9, and 15. Psalm 38, 8, 9, and 15. Peter, Psalm 34, 18. Somebody lend Peter a Bible. Here, here. 3418. Uh, Bernie, Psalm 147, 3. Psalm 147, 3. Ryan, Isaiah 66, 13. Psalm 9, 9, please. 1 Peter 5, 10. 1 Peter 5, 10. Now, those of you who are not reading, I've just asked you to close your eyes so we cut out having to look at me or distractions and just let, let these verses wash over you. I'll point to you when I'm ready for you to go. We'll start with Psalm 38, verses 8, 9, and 15. Stephen. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. All my longings lie open before you, Lord. My sign is not hidden from you. Lord, I wait for you. You will answer, Lord my God. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in the spirit. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. After you suffer a short time, God who gives all grace will make everything right. He will make you strong and support you and keep you from fault. He called you to share in His glory in Christ, a glory that will continue forever. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over time. Thank you all. For me, one of the most comforting encouraging pictures 
that I think of is God holding me in the safety and cover of his hand. I thought it was neat how you came up with that song right before. The last one we almost didn't sing, and there it was, one of the key points. If you are not into Facebooking, that's okay. I long ago got tired of doing the updates and the this and the that, but I use it now for one purpose. The, it's kind of a backdoor way to email people, meaning I don't need somebody's email address if we're friends on Facebook. To that point, I confided in to someone in this room last Sunday of a discouragement that I had. And Monday morning, I woke up to this, Jim, praying for peace for you and your family this week. I think that put a smile on my face while I was still lying there in bed. Am I the only one that sleeps with the phone right by the bed? <laughs> the alarm goes off, boop, little message. And there's Ryan Hall. Thanks, brother. I don't think we have each other's email addresses or phone numbers, but through that little network or big network as it is. So if you're not into it or if you're not technologically inclined, get somebody to show you how. Again, I think everybody gets tired of the, the teenager side of Facebook of constantly, I'm at this place, I'm at that place. But for the backdoor email, it's pretty neat. Some more verses. 1 John 5, 14. Here. 1 John 5, 14. Jumbo, Psalm 40, 11. Uh, Psalm 31, 22, please. Uh, 18, Psalm 18.2, 18.2 please. And Psalm 22.24, lawyer, please sir. Psalm 22.24. The first one is 1 John 5.14. The more I studied this week, the more I amazed, I became amazed, more amazed I became at how many encouraging scriptures there are about encouragement. Some books that I can't quite remember the last time I looked up a verse in have some of the best ones. Nahum 1, 7. Who will read that for me? Nahum, first of all, you have to find it. Russ, Nahum 1, 7. I know. Um, Malachi 4, 2. Mr. Dismute. And then Psalm 69, 16, and 17. Psalm 69, 16, and 17, please. And because of the air's on, because I'm hot natured, like my friend, uh, speak up a little bit louder when you read, please. All right, Nahum 1, 7. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Malachi. 
But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. I love that one. The Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. And then lastly, Psalm. Answer me, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love, and your great mercy turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Thank you. Several years ago at an undisclosed location, I went up and poked a good brother at church and said, go meet those people. They're brand new. They've got three kids. They both, they got transferred here. And the person said, that's not my gift. <laughs> That's not my gift. I'm an extrovert. Those of you who know me know that. You don't have to be an extrovert to say, hi, I'm glad you're here. Do you? What keeps us, self-included sometimes, from speaking to a stranger? I'm so afraid that they'll have been a member here longer than I have. <laughs> and it, it's kind of like, you know, walking up to a woman and saying, so when are you due? <laughs> you, you can't unwind that when you go, so you're, visit, you're visiting today. And they're like, no, I've been here since I was born here. So how can, we, how can we get over that? Let's say we're not a super duper expert and we are not really inclined to speak to somebody that we just have, do not recognize at all. How could we approach that person? When you're old, it's no problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> let's, let's model some verbiage. What can we say that would not embarrass us in case... They have been here longer than we have. Say hi, I haven't met you yet. Perfect. I agree with her, first of all, but uh, I tell them my name. And if they say, I know that, then I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> then I have to admit, well, I don't remember having met you. Just be honest up front. Right. It's gone. The problem's gone. What is the sweetest sound to the human ear? person's own name. The sweetest sound. If somebody says, Jim Bradley, does that pick my heart up? Sure it does. It's my name. Mom and daddy gave it to me. Then there are those situations where you turn to someone, say at church, and you say, hey, um, weren't we at Harding together? And they go, uh-huh. And it's, now, Remind me, what club were you in? Such and such. Okay. Jim, do you, do you remember that we've known each other a while? Yeah, well, you look. <laughs> oh, it gets a lot better. You really look familiar to me. Your name? Ch Charles Dismute. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, Charles. Now tell me a little bit about you. Where are you from? Memphis. <laughs> where I'm from. And I said, oh, oh. Uh, Where'd you go to high school? Harding Academy. Oh, Jim, we were in acapella chorus together for four years. Love you, brother. Oh, touche. And and I'd like to, I'd like to encourage I'd like to encourage you. My company makes them too, baby. And we have, and we have zero copay. <laughs> so, that's my first takeaway for today. If it's hard for you, push yourself. If it's easy for you, and maybe you've gotten out of the habit, because we all come in here today with different things on our minds. Some of us are ecstatic over a ball game yesterday. Some of us are torn up over something that happened to a relative all sorts of issues on the emotional spectrum. Say that person's name. Peter, you don't know it, but you've been a huge encouragement to me the last few weeks. And I haven't been very forthcoming 
but you gave me space, but you continued to be there. Thank you. Jack took a long look at his speedometer before slowing down. Ouch. 73 and a 55. Fourth time in four months. How could I get caught so often? <laughs> when his car slowed to 10 miles an hour, he pulled over, but only partially. You know, let the cop worry about the potential traffic hazard. Maybe some other car will tweak his backside with a mirror or something. The cop was stepping out of the car, big pad in hand. Oh my, oh my, that's Bob, that new guy at church. Oh my gosh. Jack sunk even further down into his seat. This was worse than the coming ticket. What a humiliation. A Christian cop catching a guy from his own church. <laughs> a guy who happened just to be a little anxious to get home from a long day at the office. Jumping out of the car, he approached the police officer and said, hey, I've never seen you in uniform, Officer Bob. Uh, fancy meeting you like this. Hello, Jack. No smile. Guess you caught me uh, red-handed uh, in a rush to see the old, my wife and kids. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did. You know, Bob, I've, I've had a lot of long days at the office lately, and I'm afraid I bent the rules a little bit just this once. <laughs> kind of towing the pebbles on the side of the road. Uh, you know, Diane said something about roast beef and potatoes tonight, and you know that'll get any of us running home a little faster than usual. Yeah, I, I know what you mean there, Jack. I also know that you have a reputation in our precinct. <laughs> Double ouch. This is not going in the right direction. Time to change, change tactics. What'd you clock me at? 71. Would you please sit back in your car? Now, now, wait a minute, Bob. I mean, come on. Uh, I, I, I checked up on the, you know, the accelerator as soon as I saw you. Come on, man. We go to church <laughs> together. I, I was barely nudging 60. The lies seemed to come easier with every ticket. Please, Jack, get back in the car. Flustered, Jack hunched himself through the still open door. Slamming it shut, he stared at the dashboard. He was in no rush to open the window. The minutes ticked by. Bob scribbled away on his pad. Jack thought, why hasn't he asked me for my driver's license? Whatever the reason, it's going to be a month of Sundays before I ever sit near this guy again at church. A tap on his door jerked his head to the left. There was Bob, a folded paper in his hand. <coughs> Jack rolled down the window a mere two inches, just enough to let the officer pass the paper in. Thanks, brother. Jack could not quite keep the sneer out of his voice. Bob returned to his car without a word. Jack watched his retreat in the mirror. Jack unfolded the sheet of paper. How much is this one going to cost me? Wait a minute, what is this? Some kind of joke? It's not a ticket. Jack began to read. Dear Jack, long before we knew each other, I had a daughter. She was six when she was killed by a car. You guessed it, a speeding driver. A fine and three months in jail, and the man was set free. Free to hug his daughters, all three of them. I only had one, and I'm going to have to wait till heaven to ever hug her again. A thousand times I've tried to forgive that man. A thousand times I thought I had. Maybe I did, but I need now to do it again. Even now, pray for me. And be careful. My son is all I have left. Signed, Bob. Jack twisted around in time to see Bob's car pull away and head down the road. He watched down the road long after the police officer's car disappeared. A full 15 minutes later, he too pulled away and drove slowly home, praying for forgiveness and hugging a really surprised wife and kids when he arrived home. Life is precious. Handle with care. Encouraging words. What did that cost the police officer? 
they have it within their discretion, at least up to a certain limit, I think. I don't know how I know that. Three months ago in Tennessee. And um, I found an online driving course for $20. It's really good. The second thing I want to leave you with is sometimes the best encouragement we can give somebody is just saying, it's okay. It's okay. Right? I love to read. A lot of you, a lot of us probably have seen the movie Secretariat. It was written by Laura, and Laura Hillenbrand. She has a relatively new book within the last year called Unbroken. I, I, I misspoke. It's not Secretariat. She wrote Seabiscuit. I've got my wires crossed. This is her book, Laura Hillenbrand, Unbroken. If you would like to read something encouraging in addition to some of these scriptures, it's one of the best books I've ever read. Anybody read it? A lot of people have read it. Would you agree with me? Yes. One of the most uplifting, encouraging stories, real life stories that ever happened, that ever, I've ever read. Zamperini, Louis Zamperini is the, the lead character. So that's takeaway number three. We have about two minutes left, and here comes takeaway number four. We're at church. We're going to leave here in a little while and go out all different places. But in church, I know you'd agree with me, this is where it's supposed to be safe. I can tell Pete, I'm down in the dumps because of this. I need some encouragement and get a hug or a Facebook message. Especially here, I want to encourage us.